ladies and gentlemen, the great Velma Houston, Whitney Houston, Mammy. And if you don't know this song, you should know this song. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, this is Thelma Houston, and don't leave me this way. Don't you leave me this way. I can't survive. All right, we're going to let Thelma, she's going to be in my background. We're going to have her and Gloria Ghana. Okay, but we ain't going to, I didn't know she did never can say goodbye. So I go out to download that later. I, I did not know she did that song. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I y'all know. Oh, oh, baby! I cannot play this song in our background. It just sorry, Thelma. You and I, you know, you know that you and I and this song go way, way back. Even before the song came out, you know that you and I went back. So, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot play Don't Leave Me This Way, either her version or Teddy Pendergrass's version of this song. You know, everybody calls it a disco song. Ladies and gentlemen, that song has a whole lot more to do with stuff than disco. Now look, we's got to talk, okay? There's a lot going on right now, and y'all need to be aware that there's a lot going on right now. The little da you just heard right now, that is my water acclimation system that I just turned on. All right, it is, I'm getting to know it, practicing with it, playing with it, understanding it, and that type of stuff. Water acclimation, what that? Well, it actually takes the air and it forces it through the system and it takes the humidity that's in the air and it converts it to pure water. And then it filters that water and puts it into a container. And I have drinking water from the air. It's called air to water purifying system. So might as well look it up and take a look and see if it's something you might be interested in. They're not cheap, sorry. Can have air to water systems and they be cheap, <laughs> okay? Ooh wee, they, they ain't gonna let y'all do that one. All right. Let's get back to our conversation because it is necessary that we talk about a couple of things. Someone sent me a video this morning uh, dealing with a Mr. Middleton. And Mr. Middleton, he's the guy who created a process whereby individuals can improve their trades in Bitcoin. And yes, like every other invention by a person of color, somebody took it and hijacked it and tried to get their own patent. Uh, 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 because he put it on video. So let me explain to you guys that before they came out with Bitcoin, I came up with something known as grant funds. Again, I, I keep telling everybody on video that SACOM doesn't pay any of its employees in dollar bills. We pay every single one, whether they're subcontractors or otherwise, in grant funds. All of our bills are paid in grant funds. We do not pay in dollar bills. We never have. Why? Because currency is currency. You can make anything currency. I can make a piece of paper currency. Oh, yeah, they call it fiat currency. You didn't invent that. They did that a long time ago. There you go. So as long as you understand the basic premise that anything could be currency, a pair of shoes could be currency, two rocks could be currency, two pieces of a stick could be currency. You can take a stick and you can put a notch on it, and that's currency. Why, if you ever do your research on currency, you see that that's what people have done throughout the decades. They have taken and they've done those things. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, in creating the grant funds, the next thing was, was to better understand the whole credit scheme. Because we knew that the country ran off credits. Pay attention, full faith and credit. Excuse me, what's the credit? Oh, well, you know, they gave you credit for, um, you know, for that speech you gave. And then they gave you credit for, you know, how you walked down the street that day. And then they gave you credit for just shutting up. Yeah, they, you can get credit for anything. But pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Eventually, they created another form of credit, which has got everybody confused. It wasn't the intent to get everybody confused when they created it, but they later used it to confuse people thereafter. What did they do? They created this thing called consumer credit. Consumer credit is a piece of junk. That's just something they created. That is something, that's why they can document it and record it and regulate it. So, for you guys to fully understand credits, we're going to try to break it down. Now, I hope you're prepared to listen because there shouldn't be any antics or any uh, interference or anything like that. So, let's talk about consumer credits. Ladies and gentlemen, in our society, since 1933, we've come we've become a debt-based society. Why? Because the United States went into bankruptcy, but some intelligent idiot gave them the idea, oh no, 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 you're, you're, you're in bankruptcy, but we're gonna take it and make the bankruptcy worthwhile. We're gonna have you use it to your advantage. Wait, how can you use a bankruptcy to our advantage? We're bankrupt. Oh no, see, you're gonna take your debt and you're going to make your debt exchangeable. You're going to exchange debts with each other. And we're going to give that value. So you're going to trade in debt. So everything is going to be a debt. And we're going to make debt the new currency. Wait, making debt the new currency? Yeah, the same as you make dollar bills currency and gold and silver currency. We're going to make debt currency. Wait a minute. You mean... The person who has the most debt, it becomes the winner? That's right. Huh. You know what? That don't sound too bad yet. So I can go into, no, you're not bankrupt. You're just creating debt. Just because you have debt, that doesn't mean you're bankrupt. Okay? Bankrupt means you have no assets, no currency. You can't sustain yourself without some help. It's an emergency. Well, y'all not no emergency. Nope. Y'all creating debt. That's where you're going to get your wealth from. Creating wealth. Out of debt. Do your research on it, people. Hey, wait, I want you all to understand. Creating wealth out of debt. I want you all to understand. I've never researched it. Ever. We're going to get back to the currency thing from 1933 and help you guys better understand the credit and debt thing. But I need to explain something to you. I had a conversation about a week ago, a week and a half ago with a young man who tried to challenge me on what I knew. Talking about how they've been doing something since the early 90s and that they did this research and all this other stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, what did Tupac say? I don't give up. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, whew. Let me explain something to you so that you all can understand. I don't study this stuff. I don't spend my day studying this stuff. What I've spent the last couple of days doing was putting together a lawsuit, which we got just about finished. I just have to reorganize the table of contents because I've added more information so the pages have changed. So now i got to line up the pages. But after that, it gets filed, gets sent off into the mail. And then we can tell you guys that we're doing two things. We're doing a lawsuit and we're doing another motion. Now, the other motion is the most important one. The lawsuit is piece of junk. The other motion is the most important. That's the thing that gets things done. We'll explain all of it to you in a segment of videos. But just wanted to make sure we understood that part right there. Now, I don't study this stuff that you hear me talking about. I'm just giving you information. 
That's why I tell you, go look it up. I've never researched that. Go look it up. Creating wealth out of debt. Just go ahead, look it up, and then dev into it. I mean, really dev into it, because then you will better understand what I'm talking about. Because it's being done every day. It's been done since 1933. Guaranteed. Because look at your dollar bills. This note is legal tender, good for the payment of all debts. You can only use that piece of junk, that coupon, to pay for a debt. You cannot buy anything when you're in bankruptcy. United States can't make a profit in bankruptcy. That's why the stupid ongoing emergency is still ongoing. That's why we're still under the Trading with the Enemy Act. Okay, they cannot make a profit. It will be illegal. The creditors can come in and say, give me my money. So pay attention, people. All right. Let's go back and segue into the conversation. And the reason why I brought that up is because the gentleman who's trying to pit his knowledge with mine, I served Jehovah. I asked him for this knowledge. He gave it to me. Proof that he gave it to me is the amount of people who've listened to the over 10,000 videos I've been producing since 2009. Nope, 2010. 2010, sorry. Got to get it correct. 2009 is when I first went and looked at a YouTube video because I was trying to help somebody. Then 2010, I decided to comment on someone's video because somebody did a video. You know, I... I don't know if it was Winston Shroud. I don't know if it was Winston's video that they were commenting on, and I was telling where he got the information from, or if it was Mr. Davis. Or no, Sam Jones, sorry. Is it Sam Jones? Uh, I, I forgot what Sam's name is. I apologize. It is Sam, but I, it's either Davis or Jones. But anyway, uh, somebody made a comment on one of his videos, and then I commented on that and explained because... Sometimes when those of us who do videos like this, we don't give you guys the full story because we're assuming that everybody knows what we is, that you don't watch all the previous videos. So for those of you who don't get the full story, the video isn't for you. The video is for those who keep track, who keep up. But then you'll have some people like me that will come along and say, no, 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 this is what they meant. No, no, this is what they were talking about. No, 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 this is where they got that from. Okay? Okay. You can continue. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to prove what I know. I invite you to disprove what I say. Go ahead. I invite you to disprove what I say and to prove it by a preponderance of evidence. Don't just prove it because somebody else says something different. Don't challenge me with a statement. Bring forth a fact and a conclusion that's a fact and a conclusion and not your opinion. Your opinion, Tupac said it best. I could give a <clears throat> explicit. Now, um, another segue. Those of you who are to the east of California, I've warned you for a week, especially those who in the eastern part of the country, this past week, you guys got hit with a lot of wind, okay? Los Angeles and the surrounding areas right now are getting hit with a lot of wind. They got that Santa Ana thing going on, a whole lot of wind. <laughs> We're not going to get that. Um, We're a little bit too far from Los Angeles for that to happen. But anyway, those of you to the east, this system that's coming through now is extremely cold, okay? They say that our temperatures are supposed to be in the high 30s, low 40s in the morning. I'm looking at ice on top of my automobiles. Uh, and I'm sorry, we got one more segue because I promised this company I would do this. They didn't ask me to do this. I am not a sponsor of them, but I'm going to sponsor them. A lot of the other antivirus companies don't like this company. They don't like them, but I'm going to promote them because, you know, they did me all right. They have a free version. It's called, as soon as it pops up, and because of the video and everything, it might, it might take a second to pop up. But it's called Advanced System Care. Advanced, with an ED, System Care. 
advanced system care. This is not it. This is only part of the problem. Uh, uh, part of the program. Part of the problem. Part of the program. So advanced system care. And it is because I'm running a couple of things, including this. So this right here is running an antivirus. I use 360 Total Security. I run them together. You know, people say you shouldn't really run them together. And I say, get them out my face. Get the out my face. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll say again, the reason why I'm, and I'll, I'll show you advanced system care later, telling you about advanced systems care is because I had the free version and I said, you know what? I need to update it because I need to have access to one more of their programs because they have several programs that are part of the premium events for system care. For what it does, the registry clean and all that stuff, it is the thing, uh-oh, something made it move. Oh, that's right, something's interfering. That's why it's a problem. See right there? That something's interfering. Now, no, this is because the antivirus, I don't have it hooked up. I'm not running the antivirus. This is the stuff I was running right here. Right here. This is advanced system scale. And so advanced system care, I needed the premium version because I needed a couple of things added to it. And so I ordered the pro version, which is $14 a year. And there was a mistake. So I upgraded to the premium version, but then there was another mistake. I contacted the company and told them what was going on. And I asked them just to give a refund and I'll go ahead and do such and such, such and such. And they said, no, look, if you want a refund, we'll give you a refund. But if you just want to do this, then this is what we'll do. Ladies and gentlemen, did not give me a single hassle. If you notice, I said premium, but this ultimate. If you notice, it's the ultimate version. That's what they did for me without giving me a hassle. Their customer service was excellent. They did not give me a hassle. No, we need to see this. No, you need to do this. No, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't go nowhere. Here's a hoop. All right, now jump through this hoop. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Now jump through this hoop. Now we're going to keep having you jump through hoops until you get tired of jumping through hoops, okay? Other companies have you jumping through hoops. Other companies have you jumping through hoops. Lord have mercy. They did not give me one single issue the whole time I was going back and forth with them. And when I say going back and forth, it was just a matter of, would you like for us to do this? Just let us know. And then I say, okay, yes, do that. Okay, we, we've done that. Now, would you like for us to do this? Okay, yes, you can do that. Huh. You know what? I'm going to do a video and let my the people who listen to my video know about Advanced Systems Care that your customer service is exceptional. And thus, I'm letting you guys know about Advanced Systems Care. You know I don't uh, get paid for any of my videos. No matter how many people have watched my videos, I don't get paid. YouTube is not a business for me. Everybody, oh, subscribe, 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 like, 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 gotta click like, oh, like really helps the channel. I don't give up about this stupid channel. Okay, I don't care about this channel. This is just a means for me to put out information and for those people, remember, I don't advertise. So the way you found this channel is because you were looking for specific information. And if you've remained, that means that you appreciated the information you were getting. That's all this is about. This has nothing to do with trying to make money on YouTube. I can give, I could care less about YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's segue back to the money thing because if you're homeless, if you're working a part-time job, if you're struggling to make ends meet, if you don't have a home of your own, if you're living in an apartment, this information should help you improve your status no matter who you be. Too many people are out there trying to change and do this document and file this form and create this. Stop, everybody. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do all of that. 
you can't get out of the system. Everybody else who claims they got out of the system, where are they at now? But they'll tell you, but they won't show you any proof. Now, we do have some people who are trying some things. I just spoke with, look, I just spoke with someone. And that person was letting me know that some other people that I helped in the past that really got a lot of information, communication, conversations, helped them in the past, what they've been able to achieve over the last couple of years since I haven't been in touch with them and they haven't been in touch with me. But do you think they bothered to ever, ever tell me what they've been doing and what they've been able to accomplish and what they've been able to achieve? What I've had is people come to me. Now, there was a guy, I got to call him back. He tried to call me on Friday night and I was tired. And I told him, I said, look, wait, hold on. <laughs> you started the conversation now. And you know what you didn't do? You didn't ask me if I was doing anything. You didn't ask me if I was busy or nothing. You just started talking. I said, the first thing you could have said is, hey, are you busy? Is this a good time? I said, but you didn't do that. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You don't apologize. You don't apologize when you ain't did nothing wrong. Come on now. Stop that. I said, that's what Henry Lynch was all about. Yes, sir, Master. I sorry, Master. I just won't do it no more, Master. You don't apologize when you ain't did nothing wrong. I said, if you had offended me, I would have told you you offended me. Well, the only thing I'm doing is saying to you, maybe you can think about this the next time. You know, you know what? I will take that into consideration and I will work on that is the proper response in most cases. You know what? My bad. Now, my bad works. Nobody can get mad at my bad. Okay? Nobody can get mad at my bad. It's not actually an apology, but it's a an acknowledgement that there was an issue. My bad. You're not saying <laughs> I'm at fault. You're just saying my bad. You know? <laughs> my bad. That's all it is. So, what I explained to the person, no, you don't need to apologize because I'm not complaining that you did something wrong. What I'm saying is perhaps you were too excited with the information you wanted to give to me that you didn't realize it's later in the day. And I told everybody, I don't do well later in the day. In the mornings, whoo-wee, a lot of energy. In the afternoon and the evenings, especially on a long day, I ain't got the energy. Matter of fact, we were, we're building a stand for the solar panels. We built one. And the gentleman that's helping me, he's built the second stand, but now I got to build the other two stands. And this is wooden stands that are adjustable that the wood, just the wood by itself, cost me over $300 for the stand. Because these are treated wood and they're over 175 inches in length. So it's a lot of wood. And but the construction is fine. He's never built it before. He designed it in his head. Never built it before. But not only has it withstood the wind, it withstood the rain and, you know, so forth. And so we were putting that together yesterday. But I couldn't help him this time because I told him that even if I bend down to help you, my back is killing me. And so we just stood out there listening to some classic oldies of the 80s. Because you can't go back to the 80s, ladies and gentlemen. Well, anyway, in doing that, there's been a lot of pain in the back all night long. But I'm all right now. I can stand and move around because this whole time I've been talking to y'all, I haven't been sitting down. I've been walking around because that's what I do. Now, we're going to get back to rolling through this. Those of you who have debts. I want you to understand who I am because people can't believe that there are people out there that exist like me. No, they believe that what I'm doing, there's got to be a gimmick. I must be trying to get something out of you. I must be begging you and pleading you for money. I promised people that I would give them more than they gave me. I gave my word on that to this day. I believe 
that I have given back more than what was ever given to me. To this day, I believe that, and nobody can convince me otherwise. Everybody who's bought anything from any one of the companies that I operate has gotten three to four times, 10 times, 20 times, 100 times back when they bought a sat pack, a Q pack, uh, what is it? Every other type of pack they bought, they got more than what they bargained for and more than what they paid for. Now, some people got greedy. See, not only did we give them more than what they bargained for, but then there was, but you also said you were going to do this. Excuse me. Mother, you better be happy you got what you got because we didn't promise you that we were going to give you that. But you got it, didn't you? Now go ahead and do the math and you'll see that's exactly what you were promised. We've had to do that several times because several people literally got greedy. Instead of saying, you know what? I gave you $600 and you gave me over $75,000 in credits that are dollar for dollar according to the law. Man. And I can't see the value in that. I apologize to y'all. We had some people get the uh, Omega pack. Sorry, I have a coyote uh, in my yard. Give me a second. Because they like to mess with my dogs. And because he's downwind and it's cold. I know you better keep going. It's two of them, and they come over here because they know my dogs are here. And people say, well, you shouldn't you be afraid of the coyotes? I'm not afraid of nobody's coyotes. Max, man, if Max ever came in contact with one of those stupid coyotes, they, ah, I heard about um, somebody's animal uh, being attacked by 12 different coyotes and doing a GoFundMe to help the animal out because the animal killed eight of them. Uh, they get closer and closer, but let's just say this early in the morning, they don't normally come around. I have cameras. I was able to see them in the fog walking, and so they won't be doing it no more. Um, and plus they run when they hear me anyway. So there you go. Coyotes. And that was two of them, but there's a, there's a den near me. And the coyotes have never done anything to me, so I can't actually go and do something to them. They haven't harmed anything on the property. They haven't harmed me and my animals, just in case some of you were concerned. Let's get back to the conversation. In 1933, ladies and gentlemen, we went to something that hadn't really existed before. We went to an economy. See, before they just had a monetary system. But... When they went off the so-called gold standard, now I want you all to pay attention. Everybody keeps talking about the United States going off the gold standard in 33. They went off the gold standard after the March 9, 1933 Act. You see, the March 9, 1933 Act officially created a new currency. But with the public policy of HJR 192, that's right, a House Joint Resolution is public policy. It's not law. It's a policy. That's why you're running into problem with the courts. That's why they're telling you, don't be bringing that junk in this courtroom. Because you're talking to them about a policy as opposed to a law. The gold standard and everything came from the New Deal. The New Deal came first. Presidential Proclamation 2039 came first. Presidential Proclamation 2039 and the Congressional record and the amendment to the March 9, 1933 Act made your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, and trade acceptances for the exact same purposes as legal tender. Don't take my word for it. Go back and read. Just pull up the act and type in there, real simple, purpose. Okay? And then you'll find the section that says are to be used for the same purpose as national bank notes. You could actually type in national bank notes. National bank has a hyphen, but you could type in national bank notes and get the same information. Okay? So, 
because they said your junk paper was legal tender paper ladies and gentlemen we went to a paper currency we went to a paper currency now why is that so important because the government made paper money paper money the government made paper comma money paper money had that been done before yes but you had several 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 people saying no you can't do that once you go to paper currency then they get to exploit it well they went to paper currency full-fledged hog 1933 so guess what ladies and gentlemen your notes your drafts your bills of exchange they told you your bills of exchange are to be used for the same purpose as national bank notes and when they told you that your bills of exchange were worthless many of you have done bills of exchange all you got to do is document that according to the law my bill of exchange is to be used for the same purposes as national bank notes which are legal tender and you said they were worthless but yet you provided no proof just your words you need to return no as a matter of fact you don't need to re don't tell them they need to return anything just say now you're indebted to me for the full amount of that bill of exchange now some of you guys wrote bills of exchange for hundreds of millions of dollars then do your 1099 but you can't do a hundreds of millions of i mean billions and trillions of dollars you can't do that with the irs online you must send in the form and you must show the documentation and you must show the law don't contact me and ask me how to do this for you that's not my job my job is for you to understand that anyone who owes you a debt and if you made a payment with a bill of exchange the law says that that is currency of the united states I wasn't planning on doing this, but I might as well show you what I'm talking about. Have I looked this up in the past? No. Will I look it up now? Yes. Thelma, go ahead. I think I'll be okay with this song. Bill of Exchange definition. A bill of exchange is a written order, negotiable instrument. Go ahead and go back and look at the definition of negotiable instrument. Used primarily in international trade that binds one party to pay a fixed sum of the money to another party. Okay, Bill of Exchange Act. Now, again, checks and promissory notes. Bills of Exchange. Okay. Bill of Exchange, a short term negotiable instrument. Now, hold on. Let me show y'all something so that we got this straight. Need, need your loving, baby. We just put a negotiable instrument as a substitute for money. A negotiable instrument can be used as a substitute for money. Okay. We gonna turn my girl off for a second because I need to talk. Come and satisfy the need in me. Oh, oh, baby. Come and satisfy the need in me. Oh, baby. Okay, sorry. Y'all just don't know what that song does to me especially the beginning that she couldn't have started that song off any better than what she did at the beginning ladies and gentlemen 
they talk about the origins and early histories of negotiable instruments and they let you know that it's bills of exchange let's do this we're going to go and this is the uk and the reason why we're in the uk is because my vpn is canada again and so because my vpn i don't mind telling people i use a vpn i use a vpn for several reasons not to hide my identity i has an identity i don't need to hide it i know who the i am ladies and gentlemen this is the minnesota law review okay now we're going to just read this i haven't read this before we're just going to read this section we're not going to go down here we're just going to read this right here because i promise you i think it's important promissory notes are almost invariably described in judicial opinions and in legal text as being either substitutes for money representatives of money or contracts circulating like money or performing in part the functions of money instruments possessing the same circulable character as money part of the currency of the country credit instruments performing the functions of paper money a medium of exchange possessing advantages of flexible paper currency and serving as substitute for government bills and notes Ladies and gentlemen, these are all of the laws. I'll, I'll put this link at the bottom of the video so that you guys can pull it up. So if you've ever written an hour style money order and it didn't go through, I don't matter, doesn't matter how many times you wrote it and it didn't go through, they ignored it or anything, you can show proof that you gave them a substitute for money. Do they have the right to ignore it? No, because it serves the same purposes, pay attention, as legal tender, as money. When you go into a court, you say, I done paid them mother with a negotiable instrument that they took my promissory note and they stamped on it, paid to the order of. That converted it to a negotiable instrument. We are in that era. We've been in that era for the last 90 years. March 9th, 2023 is 90 years since we came off the gold standard and since we came to this standard of recognizing that promissory notes and bills of exchange are currency of the United States. How dare you tell me that they can do it, but I can't. They can take my promissory note Stamp it, pay it to the order, and make it a negotiable instrument, and I can't do the same with a bill of exchange, which is a negotiable instrument, which is currency in the United States. How dare you sit up here and play these word games with me? Ladies and gentlemen, you see it right now. This is what I do. Again, when I say I haven't looked this junk up before and I say we're going to read the first paragraph, I've never read that before. I've never read that first paragraph before, never read this document before, not to the best of my knowledge. But I can tell you one thing, that's Minnesota. And what, what year was this done? <laughs> March 1930. <laughs> oh, God. Case in point. It's been the law ever since. It has not changed. And so when they said notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers, acceptances, trade acceptances, they were going by these laws. I hope you all understand. I really do hope y'all understand. Let's get back to talking about you people who got bills. Not telling you. Not telling you. I am not telling you. You can pay your landlord. You can pay your brother, your mother, your sister, your cousin, your niece, your nephew, your uncle, your cousin, your dog, your cat, your pigeon, your dove with a negotiable instrument known as a promissory note or a bill of exchange. That's not what I'm saying. You know what I'm telling you? I'm telling you that you can write that junk off on your taxes as an expense. I'm telling you you can write it off on your taxes as a bad debt deduction. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, when you pay money to a company, I remember a bill of exchange is money. It's a substitute for money. A bill of exchange is money. It's a substitute for money. A bill of exchange is money. It's a substitute for money. 
you know what? I think I may have this document. I see the title right here. Promissory note as a substitute for money. I may have this document. I may have done a video on this title right here for this document showing you guys that a promissory note is a substitute for money. Ta-da! So I may have done this now that I'm looking at it because I remember that title, a promissory note is a substitute for money. Because I did a video trying to let you guys know that your promissory notes fall under notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers, second to trade acceptances. Same conversation we're having now. But even if it wasn't this document, it was another document talking about a promissory note being a substitute for money because a promissory note, when it has an endorsement on it, is a negotiable instrument. And a negotiable instrument is a form of payment. You don't have to argue with no judge. You simply tell the judge, oh, no, that's a matter for a jury to decide. See, I just have to show that I tendered payment, an acceptable form of payment for the United States. And then you throw this stupid law review in their face. How many pages is the law review? 30? You throw the stupid law review in their face. As a matter of fact, give me a second. I'm going to print this up. I got some people who are incarcerated, and this is information they need to know. Because I told you, in the month of February, we're also going to be helping people who are incarcerated to take care of debts, to accumulate debts. Ladies and gentlemen. This is two things we're doing, and you may not see it, but I do. Two things we're doing. We're going to do duplex, so give me a second. Uh, yeah, we're going to do two copies. And I don't know if I have it set for correlation. It better be set for correlation. It better be set for duplex, too. Let's see. Duplex. And no margins. And the scale is right. The letter size is right. Got to just got to make sure all this before we start printing. And we going to print. And it's going to go to the printer that I just turned on. And it's going to print. And then again, I will put a copy of this in there for the rest of you guys. I believe we either have this one or another document similar to this on our website. Because I remember this promissory notes as substitute for money. So I do remember that. So we probably do have that on our website. Um, like I said, I remember the title. So there you goes. Back to the back to the situation at hand. How to make things easier on you. Ladies and gentlemen, all you gotta do, because you were told by me when you did the hour style money orders to keep a copy. To make a copy you know how much it was for they sent it back to you they told you oh this is an unacceptable form of payment ladies and gentlemen you promised to pay them in dollars well pay attention no i gotta show it to you we can't we can't just pay them in dollars so hold on gotta open this up i gotta show it to you because you gotta see it for yourself uh give me one second let's it's gonna ask me about printing in a second so i gotta get rid of that one come on there's one more and this document has been redone the document we put up there for you guys on your tax uh this section and again this section of the tax form shows you how to fill out the schedule c people it's a suggestion as to how to fill out the schedule c and what you will need we put that in the document for you for you PDFs, satcoms, 911.com forward slash PDFS, PDFs, with all capital PDFS, and then you just go to a legal understanding, and you go through the documents, and you'll see all the documents necessary for getting the understanding about debt, everything, all the forms and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, when we first put this out there, oh, and by the way, this document is now fillable. You can now fill this stuff in. Put the date, like right here. Just click right here. Date, you know what I mean? And then signatures. And there are some places where when you put your signature in, you're going to have to do it by hand. Sorry, the document will duplicate your signature in every signature spot. Now, if you want it in every signature spot, you can do that. Ooh, doggy. Anyway, and you can also clear the form. Now, this is done temporarily for you guys, but it's done. So you can use this document. Just pointing that out. Oh, 
what was happening is that this was overlapping. This stuff was overlapping this, and this was below and everything, so we moved it back to where it was supposed to be. So this is currently been updated on the website. Now, let's get back to the information y'all need to be knowing about. We're going to move this up so I can get to this because I need to be able to see what I was doing. And we're going to go up here because we need to explain it to y'all because, see, y'all ain't been understanding, and so we're going to give y'all an understanding. And this is not for no stupid court to decide whether or not this is what the law says. You are supposed to be an expert at the law. You are supposed to be an expert at the law. The law clearly makes it, clearly makes it, clearly makes it necessary that every person in the United States know the law. For ignorance of the law is inexcusable. So everyone is required to know the law. So this is saying when such circulating notes are issued against the securities of obligations of the United States, the amount of such circulating notes shall be equal to the face value of the direct obligation of the United States so deposited. What? Direct obligation. And when issued against security, the security of notes drafts, bills of exchange, bills of exchange, negotiable instruments, negotiable instrument, negotiable instrument, and bankers' acceptances, negotiable instruments, acquired under the provisions of this act, the amount thereof shall be equal to not more than 90%. That's why you pay 10% on all mortgages at least when you're buying a home. You put 10% down so they become whole. For the estimated value of such notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, so deposited as security, such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank. What notes? The circulating notes? No. The notes, drafts, bills of exchange, pay attention, so deposited as securities. Let's pay attention. Such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same. Procuring the same. Well, they already have the circulating notes. They're not procuring it, but they are procuring the deposited notes, drafts, bills of exchange. It's context, people, and shall be in the form prescribed by the United States Treasury. Well, hold on, just so y'all know that it ain't talking about circulating notes. Get this. Deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be entitled to receive from the Comptroller of the Currency notes in blank. We, no more, there are no more circulating notes. But anyway, prescribed by the Treasury, hold on, pay attention, of any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances acquired under the provisions of this Act, any Federal Reserve Bank making such a deposit of these notes, not of circulating notes, the deposits of these notes. So we have the context. Pay attention. Procuring the same. Federal Reserve note, procuring the same. Shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury. So it's not circulating notes because the circulating notes will already be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury because they're coming from the Comptroller of the Currency, which is the division of the sec uh, Secretary, sec Secretary of the Treasury. It says, shall be receivable. What shall be receivable? These notes that are deposited shall be receivable at par for face value in all parts of the United States for the same purposes as national bank notes. Yeah, the banks used to issue their own notes, paper money, and shall be redeemable in lawful money of the United States upon presentation at the United States Treasury or at the bank of issue. Ladies and gentlemen, lawful money of the United States at that time was circulating notes in blank and circulating notes issued by the Comptroller of the Currency. That was lawful money. People say, well, gold and silver was lawful money. No. At this point, they've taken gold and silver out of the economy. They made it paper. Gold and silver was removed at this point. That's why they're amending Section 401 of the Federal Reserve Act. Gold and silver is gone, so they made paper currency lawful money. Okay, because Congress gets to regulate the value of the currency. Go ahead. Take a look at the Constitution where they gave themselves the power to do that. 
Okay, pay attention. For the same purpose as national bank notes, you'll find in national bank notes were legal tender. 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 I apologize. National bank notes are legal tender. National bank notes are still in circulation, people. You receive them all the time. They're the credits. Now, hold on. Hold on, because some of y'all don't get this. So we're going to open up one more. I simply put Truth and Lending Act statement. Oh, we want a sample. Sorry. Example sample template. Okay, we want a sample. Now this says sample. Let's do this. This is a FTC, Federal Trade Commission. Come on, FTC, show on up, pop on up. Truth and Lending Act statement. Uh, monthly payment. The cash due at closing. Total amount. No, we're 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 looking for this document right here, y'all. Right here. Now we gon this is a basic statement of a truth and lending act statement, y'all. So I want y'all to understand this because many of y'all some of y'all get it because y'all done heard me say it before, but the rest of y'all don't get it. Annual percentage rate, the cost of your credit as a yearly rate. Say what? Finance charge, the dollar amount, the credit will cost you. What the amount finance, the amount of credit provided you on your behalf this is their circulating notes ladies and gentlemen the bank issues credits it circulates among the banks and when you buy a home pay attention what the bank does is they give a temporary credit to the seller of the home or seller of the car it's a temporary credit but I want you to understand, nowhere in here do you say you're going to pay them back in cash. It says your scheduled payments, but hold on, their credits are dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs. So why not pay them back in credits? Federal tax credits are dollar for dollar, and they're used for debts. We're in a debt-based system. See, the credit like credit disability, credit like credit disability. You're only receiving credits. Aw, did you know? So, what is being said here is many of you are not understanding how the system works. So, we're going to do you a favor because it is absolutely necessary that you understand. Because it is clear that many of you don't understand. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've written an hour style money order, if you've written a promissory note, I don't care if you did a house 85 years ago and you wrote a promissory note for that house and you made monthly payments. Somebody owes you money because that means you overpaid. So you're going to consider that you're extending credit to them. Okay? You're going to consider the fact that you extended credit to that company, to that agency, to that group. You extended credit so pay attention if you extended credit then that means that they were supposed to pay you back and they didn't that means they're indebted to you you did it as a business because it was a business deal you were dealing with a business you were getting a loan or an advancement of federal reserve notes from a business it was a business related debt that means you can write off the full amount. Now wait a minute. But I don't I don't look, see here's here's the problem, uh Mr. Redress. Here here's my situation. I don't I, I don't own no taxes. And, 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 and I don't fully understand how to do this. Well, thank you. You're I, I get your situation. No, 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 no. I understand what you're saying. 
you don't own any taxes, how does this apply to you? Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, because if I don't own any taxes, why would I want tax credits? Now, that is the question of the year. So let me explain why you want tax credits. The first thing you have to do is you have to understand if somebody owes you money and they haven't paid you, that debt is being recorded in the national debt. And unless you offset that national debt, you are hurting the country as a whole. That's right. The country cannot allow that debt to sit on its books. That, that's going to hurt the country as a whole. Okay? You, you feels me? You follows me? Goods. Now, with that being said, you have to offset your debts. Why? Because when you pay taxes this year on all of those products, you get to document all that tax you paid. You get to document all that as a loss. You get to document how many, how much taxes you paid on the state and federal level. Okay? When you document this, you'll get the monies you paid in taxes back because they'll be offset against your deductible credits. That's why it's important because you'll end up getting something in a refund. Something from nothing. Leave something. You got to get something if you file your taxes with me. So, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is find a website similar to 1099 online. Watch this. This is the easy part. Come on. We're going to do that. A L T. Ten ninety nine online alternatives. Like I said, you find one either ten ninety nine online or something similar to ten ninety nine online. See, this is software. We don't want software. Oh, amended amendment filings. Yeah, this ten ninety nine online. We don't care about IRS.gov. And let's see. We don't care about that yet. We don't care about that yet. We don't care about that yet. I don't see any comparable ones, but there are tons of them out there. Efileforbiz.com. How to correct 1099 online. And 1099. So for right now, I'm not promoting 1099 online, but it seems like 1099 online is the one you're going to be going to. Okay. Now we have 1099 Pro, so let's click on 1099 Pro. Uh oh, they don't like my. Oh, that's be, uh, this is uh, Google. Google, this is their ad service, and because I'm using a VPN, they can't track me with their ad service. So hold on, I gotta get to the actual link. You see how long this thing is? That's because that's their Google Ads, and Google tells the company this is how many people clicked on your link, and we let them get to the site. Hold on. Where are you at? There we go. Ooh. Hold on now. It did it again. I didn't ask it to go backwards. It went backwards on its own. Let's uh go back right here. And now I got to go all the way over here. Oh, you know what? I did it wrong again. Yep, I did it wrong again, y'all. I got to go all the way from here. <laughs> And then we just got to take a trip right there and get rid of that. Now I hit that. So when y'all click on the link, uh-oh, it says it ain't found. So let's do this. All right, let's see if we got this. 1099pro.com. And let's see. Forms. No, you don't care about privacy. That's why I'm going to reject your offer. Uh, phones, phones, software. 
professional. I think this is a fee-based service, but I want to file it online. I don't want to file it myself. Woo wee! Uh, three hundred dollars. I ain't going here, and I wouldn't advise you go here either, cause ten ninety nine online. It's only four dollars and ninety five cents per filing. Could be a slight bit less, but ten ninety nine online dot com is your better buy. You don't want to go here, cause this one looks like they gonna get you up the yin yang. Ooh wee! And you don't want to be got up the yin yang. Okay, because I done met both of them fools, and they 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 play for keeps. So don't let them do that to y'all. Lord have mercy. And there we go. This is efilemagic.com. efilemagic.com. Let's see their pricing. I think this is an electronic filing system. I don't want to sign up. I want to see your pricing. Hold on, get out of the way. Additional $5 per form. $10 per form to print and mail. This is a little bit more expensive than $10.99 online. Okay. Let's do print and mail. And TIN matching. See, $10.99 online gives you all of these for the same price. That's automatically included. Okay? That's what I'm saying. That's automatically included. So this one doesn't work either. 1099 online seems to be the one that offers you the best bargain for your monies. 1099 online. Y'all keep that in mind. 1099 online.com. 1099 online.com seems to be the best one for you. Okay, now that's pro. This 1099 online. So we're gonna click on 1099 online. I'm gonna add it right there for now and get rid of this junk right here for now. And then I'm gonna take this because I didn't do it before. Oh, gotta do it down here. Where you at 1099 online? Oh, there you go. Come on now, put you right there. And we can go to 1099. I didn't ask for a goodbye rule. I said 1099 online. Yeah, it don't. Okay, there we go. That's what I want. This 1099 online, y'all. 1099. As low as 55 cents per form. 1099 online. Okay, I, it's not joking. That's where you're going. 1099 online. You do your 1099A, your 1099C. Other people are charging people up the yin yang to do this process for them. Okay? I'm telling you how to do it. How I would do it. And what I would do is I'm the creditor because I'm the one who gave them the hour style money order. I'm the one who loaned them money. Look, I haven't even done my hour style money orders yet. Just by doing just the arbitrations, ladies and gentlemen, I'm at $1.8 trillion. And I can document it because we paid staff for a full year to document all of this. And then we paid them prior to that to document the beginning of the process. It has taken almost four years to fully document our credits because of the amount, ladies and gentlemen. The rest of you don't have to go through the extringent documentary process that we went through. But because we are going to be singled out, because we are going to be criticized, because we are going to be told we are doing something wrong, we had to make sure we followed it to the T. Now, speaking to the rest of you, so that you have a better understanding of what's going on, when you're filling out the 1099, and like I said, you saw me, I went to several different websites. I could go to Google and there'll probably be more, but we're going to do the 1099A. Now, do not pay attention to acquisitions. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you know the rule. Anything that's in parentheses is omitted. It's not included in the document. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. 
pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Anything that's in parentheses is not included. So a 1099A is not for the acquisition of properties. Give me a second. Be right back. I apologize. I had to log on because I need to show you what a 1099A is for. Y'all, y'all excuse me if y'all don't mind while I show this to you. Now I gotta wait for it. It does take a little time to pull up because it's a cop. A lot of information is populating a lot of information. Okay. I haven't had a problem with 1099 online, ladies and gentlemen. Really haven't had a problem. If you need to refile, they don't charge you a second time. So if you make a mistake the first time, they don't charge you a second time. Like I told you, I will refer you all to companies to whom I don't really have a problem with. The ones I have a problem with, like Google, YouTube, all that junk, I ain't referring you to them, the mo those stupid mother... I'm sorry, apologize. Let's get finished, ladies and gentlemen. We're already at an hour and six minutes, and I got to um, finish up with this lawsuit because it's going to be a long day. Yesterday at 9.25, we had sunshine. This morning at 9.25, the sun is out. Um, my systems are charging. My water acclimation system is acclimating water. But you all need to understand, I can't, ain't no sunshine when she's gone. I can't see the sun. None of my cameras have any sunlight anywhere. You can tell it's daytime, but it's so foggy. That you, it's almost 10 o'clock and it's foggy. Now I'm, I'm, I'm elevated. I'm in the mountains, but yeah, it's foggy. And so, give me a second. I'm gonna pause y'all while this uh, pulls up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, 1099 online. You will go to the year. We're gonna pick 2020. It's, it's always gonna be a previous year. All of your debts, you put the year the debt became due. We're going to do 1099A and 1099C. You can only choose one at a time. Pay attention because I'm showing you how this would be done if I was doing it and how we have done it and they have not been rejected to this present day. Okay? They have not been rejected to the present day. Now, as soon as that pulls up, I do want to let you guys know that many of you are walking in the courtrooms and you're listening to judges tell you what the law is, as opposed to making them show you what the law is. Don't sit up there and let a judge tell you that the law says this or that. If they start quoting a statute to you or a code, revised or otherwise, you say, excuse me, where's your proof? that that was part of the legislative process. Remember, that's your favorite word when you go to court. Excuse me, where's your proof that that was part of the legislative process? Remember, every law that's ever been produced has to be part of the legislative process or it is not law under any circumstances. Well, they keep sentencing people to these codes and these violation of the so-called revised statutes. Ladies and gentlemen, a revised statute and a code is not law. And when people plead to that stuff, they are voluntarily submitting themselves to that jurisdiction. Without the legislative process, there can be no law. I hope y'all understand. Now, y'all hear her? Don't leave y'all this way. Well, we're not going to leave y'all this way. We're going to go to Jennifer Garner. Uh, until we can get to the next song. Matter of fact, let me bring you down this way. So I don't have to keep going back and forth. Hold on, one more. There we go. We're going to put you right here. Now we're going to go to Jennifer, okay? And now, uh-oh, Jennifer, we got one more. I'm sorry. One more. Come on, Jenny. Now here is the 1099A. Ladies and gentlemen, no, let's put the Eon Foundation. E E E E E E E E E E E E E Foundation. First, I was afraid. I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. Been so many 
nights thinking how I did me wrong. And I grew strong. And I learned. I learned. And then I came back from out of space. Okay. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here we are. Give me what you're going to do. Give me a second. Okay, I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now, we're going to put Federal Reserve because Federal Reserve is one of the, the idiots that we're dealing with. Now, they have many offices. So because we have so many against the Federal Reserve that we want to make sure that we put in one for each one. Let's say this debt happened, oh, back in 2020. Well, I'm going to put 2019. Shoot, going to let me put 2019. Shoot, I'm going to put 2019 because the debt happened way back then. Is the borrower liable for the debt? You don't have to check this, but you can. Description of the debt, C-O-N-T-R-A-C-T-U-R-A-L. O B L I G A T I O N. Contractual obligation. Hey, how did I mess that up? Okay, contractual obligation. Now, I don't know why this is offset, and I think they might know about it. The same problem I have with mine. See, this is offset. Um, hold on. Balance. Let's say the balance was 345 000. $345,000. 345 That's what the money order was for. And it's against Federal Reserve. And then I, oh, see this right here? This is the account number. You can leave this account number alone. Okay, you don't have to click on that account number. You can leave that account number alone. And then you hit finish. And that's it. That's your 1099A. And you do the same thing for your 1099C. Whatever the date became a debt, you put that date. Let's say it was not 2019. Let's say it was... Oh, 1990. Okay. February 24th. Dad, I remember February 24th. That's when that mother did what he did and they owed me that money. Okay. But you're going to do it for a previous year because you can, ladies and gentlemen, you can go back as long as you need to go back. But you're bringing it forward. That's what this is. This is a carry forward. Change the tax year. Okay, it'll let you change the tax year. It won't let me change the tax year. Watch. Because it's frozen. Oh, there it is. See, it'll let you change the tax year. And there you Ta-da! Your, your document is done. And you do that. Now, those of you who are with Ameri Legion, you don't have to worry about this. It's already been done for you. We've already taken care of that. All of yours has been done. Okay? When you file your taxes, all you need is a copy of the showing that it was accepted. And you just give it to your tax agent the amount it was done for. Oh, man, she's done for. Just that simple. This is the process. This is how you help reduce the debt. Oh, we told you about the 1099A acquisition. Remember how that was in parentheses? Well, because 1090A, 99A is for informational purposes only. Hold on. 1099A is for informational purposes only. Yes, I've withheld that information from you guys for a long time, and I apologize for that. I've known this since I looked at the 1099s back in 2012, because I said if I was going to do the 1099, everybody was doing the 1099 OIDs. And I said, if I'm going to do the 1099s, uh-uh, it's going to be done right. Hold on. I got to figure out who I want to play. You know what? This is my girl. We're not going to look at the video. Because we don't want them to, you know, flag it and talk about, I don't know, they, they can't watch your video. This is Irene Kara that's going to play in the background. And she's singing What a Feeling. And What a Feeling is, as I told everybody, the day my father died, I went into our den and I turned on the radio after I heard the news. The rest of the family stayed there talking about speculations and what could have happened, should have happened or anything. Um... I'll give you the story briefly. My brother came in a room and he says, uh, hey, uh, I need all of y'all to come in here. We're having a family meeting. I need all of y'all to come in the living room. So we met in the living room. I got some bad news for you guys. I got something, some news I have to tell you guys. And then he gave us the news about my father having drowned and the body being missing. And while they were talking, 
I don't think they noticed, but I walked out of the room and I went into my den. And I don't know why the song ain't playing. Oh, it ain't playing because uh, they do videos and uh, my thing don't play videos, uh, the, 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 the advertisement. So this was the song that was on the radio and this is what I listened to. And in times like that, I go to the radio. I go to songs. And that's why this one is my father and for my best friend dying, it is the Stephanie Mills and Mr. Keith Booker. So there you go. There's the story. All right, you're gonna do the same thing for the 1099C. The forms are exactly the same. That's why this one is informational. Yes, they one might say this or one might say that, but they're exactly the same. They go together, 1099A, 1099C. That's why they're on the same instructional pamphlet. The 1099A is for informational purposes only. If anybody told you anything different than that, then that means that they never read the rules. In 2012, I took the time to read the rules. I've known since then that 1099A was for informational purposes, and I also know the same thing about the 1099 OID. 1099 OID requires interest to be included. Now, this will not let you do 1099 OIDs. Okay, let's see. I need to undo this one, so we are going to go dashboard. Dashboard, mama! making a dash for the board deep inside your mind all alone i have cried silent tears now you see how appropriate this song was but it was the first song that came on the radio and that's why it makes sense and when my best friend died and the less than 12 hours after he told me that I was his best friend you know both coming to saying that to each other at the same time uh, the song was where's the love so in my opinion it had left all right and it's still gone now ladies and gentlemen again we're gonna see what other type of forms you can fill out here on 1099 online Let's see if it's going to let me click these. You don't see anything for OID. Okay? Just understand that. You don't see OID. And I believe that's done on purpose because other people could have done that. All right. That goes that. What a feeling. Uh-oh, I can't show you this. I'll get in trouble for that. Whew. They, um, they won't let me show the video. Because they, they claim that's a copyright. So, well, I'm going to pause it, her and her breakdancing, so that I can finish explaining to the people who are, the people who are without a home, the people who have lost their home. All of you who have lost your home and you filed a, you filled out a promissory note initially for the home, you need to be doing a 1099 against the bank. You can find the EIN number for the bank. Hold on. We're gonna do this. Why do people say EIN numbers when the acronym EIN includes number? Lord have mercy. All right. What I did is I said the a list of financial institution EINs. Okay. And so I don't know if it's going to give me a list of EINs, but that's what I'm looking for. And I know that there is a list. That, uh, let's do that one. We're going to go to Google. Uh, let's see. Copy. Then we're going to do G-O-O-G. And we're going to do the search for Google. And we're going to do that right there. And then we're going to do that. 
And then I'm going to put that PDF in a second. Dot PDF. See, it says financial institution list, but I don't want just the list. I'll ask for the EIN numbers, and I'm not looking for employers' EIN numbers. I am looking for the – there's a list of financial institutions – uh that's foreign financial institutions let's see i'm curious if they would list them here tiktok 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 nope of course they didn't sort it by bank name i'm uh, you know what let's be curious yes you better believe i want to see this list what a feeling! You know what? This doesn't have their EIN, but this is a list of them, and this is their official information for all of the banks. Bank of America, Bank of Western Union, Bank of everybody. Everybody's got a bank. I'll try to put this uh, link underneath the video as well. So y'all have to bear with me, Bear Stern. Y'all have to bear with me. You know what? I didn't even need to do that. Sorry, I can just go here. All right. So that's not all of the banks. Okay, that's just the majority of the banks. So I'll put the list there. And y'all can just shorten that list and go to the main site. Financial Institution Handbook. They got a handbook? Lord have mercy. Need a password? I don't want a password. Hold on, y'all. Let's find out what this handbook is about. See, y'all can learn a lot from a dummy. Tax system. Electronic federal tax system. Say what? I think we may have stumbled onto something here, ladies and gentlemen. Federal tax collection service. Same day wire. Really? Now, that's interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe this is the system to where the banks pay their taxes. And I do believe that they do it through their ACH, and I guarantee you what they do when they do it through their ACH Fed wire system, they don't pay taxes on everything. Not on everything. All right, so, yeah. I'll download it. I don't think it's going to be of much use to me. But I'll download it. Yep, got it. Done. 29 pages. I'll keep it. It might come in handy. Give me a second. I'm going to look for see if there's one with uh, their EIN numbers. You'll probably find, you're going to find them on our website. But you're also going to find it on script. Did, 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 did. Hmm. I don't care about the beneficial owner. Nobody asked about the beneficial owner. Hmm. Who is this? This is a bunch of EIN numbers, but I'm interested in who this be. Because I ain't just clicking on something just to be clicking on it. Yes, you did. I saw you clicked on it because you didn't know who it was. So you just clicked. That's called clickbait. Somebody set you up. Look at that. It went to a completely different website. So you, ooh, that's clickbait. One second, ladies and gentlemen. I want to see. And then I'm going to change the name just for one second and show it to you. Oh, by the way, from. The time I told you, which was 20 minutes ago, up until now, there is sunshine everywhere. But prior to that, no sunshine. So 9.25, the 9.45, and the a.m., no sunshine. Now there's sunshine everywhere. I can see clearly now the rain has gone. And I can see all the obstacles in my way. I don't know what this is going to, but I'm not going to wait for it. I need to uh, put in the other search that I told you about because I just don't see.
Now, see, this is a PDF. Uh, this is a PDF, but I don't know who or what it's about. So I'm going to click on it, but only for a moment. Thank you for blocking Trojans because we don't need no Trojans. Oh, yeah, that was this one right here. So that was what I what it blocked was a Trojan. Oh, that's why I have that. That's called malware bytes. So this ain't it. So this is what we do. list of banks and their EIN numbers. So let's see if we can find that list. I know we have the list on our website and some of them their EIN numbers would have changed. But for the most part, the EIN numbers are gonna be the same. So we're gonna pull up this one here and then we're gonna go here. This one still ain't done what it's supposed to do. Like I said, I was just curious. Let's get curious. Let's get curious. Okay, so that ain't, that's just a list. That ain't helping nobody. I don't even know why they got this right here. But they have a financial institution number. Let's go back. And I just don't see the list like we have on our website. And I'm going to do one more. See, this is only it says Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase. This might be it. This might be a list. Uh oh. Man, there's another one of those. You might be able to get to it, but I'm not able to get to it, uh, but my VPN. So won't be able to do that at all. And all of those of you who believe that you have to be foreign and all of this stuff, I do not personally do not believe that that is necessary. I believe that we were doing overkill, and I believe that's because we were listening to the wrong people. And I believe those people were being misled and didn't realize they were being misled. What I believe is that all we need to do is simply document the record. Document the record, keep all of your facts and ducks in one barrel, and document the record. Okay, so yeah, it's not going to let me click on any of these. So because of the VPN, they don't like VPNs. TikTok, nobody asked you about no TikTok. What's this thing taking me to TikTok for when I'm asking about banks? That don't make no sense. Look at that. It's TikTok. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody's bank. But, well, TikTok is a bank. No, this ain't got nothing to do with that. I had a draft I was working on all year. A draft of what? See? Look at that. This ain't got nothing to do with banks. The mother. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Take it and waste it all my time. Yeah, I'll put this list in there for y'all, but I don't have anything else as far as pulling up a list. I thought I'd be able to pull up a list, but not able to pull up a list. So I apologize to y'all for not being able to pull up a list of the different banks. But let's get back to those of you who are trying to figure out what to do. The first thing you can do is start documenting your tax credits and do it legitimately. Go back and read IRS Tax Topic 453. Remember, some of it is technical. Some of it, the words don't mean what they seem to mean, so pay attention. Go back and look at the videos on tax credits. Start your own tax credit business. What you can do is you can create your own organization, your trust. You can do what we did, make individuals part of your organization or trust, those who sign up for your program, and use your tax credits to offset their debts. You are helping to reduce the debt of the United States, the national and public debt, and your burden on society, and your clients being part of your trust organization are not there committing a conspiracy, but they are there as a group helping to offset the debt 
of each other. You'll pay attention, you'll get it. The rest of you, if you document all of the debts and look, every time you've paid government a dime, whether it be a service fee, a charge fee, every time you paid for a cell phone bill, every time you paid for a house or a car, remember you signed a promissory note. You signed an application. That was a promissory note saying that I'm going to pay you monthly installments. That's a promissory note, ladies and gentlemen. You get to write that junk off. Remember, you deposited the promissory note. They were supposed to, according to Federal Reserve Circular Number 10, they were supposed to process that junk. You weren't supposed to be paying no monthly anything. So why were you? Why were you paying monthly anything? Yeah, it definitely ain't letting me go to that site. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not know about Italy having their own tax ID numbers, but of course they have a tax department. They have a revenue department. Of course they're going to have their own tax ID number. Of course they're going to have their own tax ID number. So now that we know that they have their own tax ID numbers, now you all know the same thing. But you can get the tax ID for Bank of America. Watch this. And we're going to get rid of this. We're going to put B of A. B. A. Now watch this. All capital letters. E. I. N. Question mark. Come on, Bank of America. Where your E. I. N. Normally it's one of the first ones up here. Bank of America. Where your E. I. N. 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 Okay. Bank of America. Where your EIN, EIN, they have several EINs, by the way, because they have several branches of Bank of America. So Bank of America. Now let's do Wells Fargo. W E L L S F A R G O. Remember EIN in all capital letters. We're gonna put a comma. Make sure you put that comma. Do not forget that comma. I forgot the comma the first time. See Wells Fargo EIN. Okay, they got several different. Wells Fargo, so E-I-N, E-I-N. And where else? E-I-N. Wells Fargo, E-I-N. All right, so every single bank, you do the same way. That's how you can fill out the 1099A, 1099C. Now you can file your taxes quarterly, annually, biannually. Quarterly, annually, biannually. And if you were to take this process now, by documenting the debt, writing it off, sending them a letter. Hey, I forgave you, mother. And then doing your 1099Cs, 1099As. You don't have to wait three days, four days, 10 days. Wait the three business days after you send the letter. Then do your 1099A, 1099C. Get your credits, people. Get your credits. Any taxes you... Well, I ain't filled out no taxes in the last 25 years. That's a good thing. Because any penalties you owe will be absorbed by the tax credits. So you'll be filing taxes from this point on. But remember, you're doing it as a sole proprietor or as a corporation. You're not doing it as a person. You're not doing it as an individual. As an individual, you're a non-taxpayer. As a corporation, you are a taxpayer for the purposes of this. And if you do this and you continually do it and you write off all of your expenses, all of your expenses, ladies and gentlemen, you remain tax-free for the rest of your life. You'll never, ever owe taxes if you follow the program that's been put in place for you. Remember, hold on, I-R-S-T-A-X-T-O-P-I-C-453. IRS Tax Topic 453 is plain, simple, and clear. Pay attention to what IRS Tax Topic 453, IRS Tax Topic 453, IRS Tax Topic 453 should become your best friend. Bad debt deductions. If somebody owes you money and you can't collect, you have a bad debt. Do not worry about them lending you money because this is not just about lending. If somebody owes you money, has nothing to do with lending, but hold on. If they owe you money and they haven't paid you back, you are lending them the money they owe you. Okay, that's why they asked you if interest was involved, all right? But in order for it to be a bad debt, you must show at the time you meant for it to be paid back. 
That's what this is saying. And by the way, you do it as a business. Why? Because you must show that it was directly or closely related to your business or trade. Just that simple. That's it. Now, uh, 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 hold on. You must document it with a detailed separate statement attached to your return. The statement must include this information here. There you go. Ta-da! It's been there all this time. Pay attention. And what do you get? Well, you get a deduction. But remember, a deduction can only be taken in the year the debt becomes worthless. You may only take the deduction only, 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 only in the year the debt becomes worthless. So what happens if it was the year has already gone by? Oh, well, then it becomes a credit. Yeah, because you can carry it forward. So now it's a credit. It's no longer a deduction. What do you mean it's no longer a deduction? You just said I could carry it forward. No, no, no. A deduction can only be taken in the year it becomes worthless. But however, for that amount that you set up there, that, that bad debt, no, now you get to carry it forward. Now it becomes a credit because you're credited that amount forward in time. Remember, this word right here is specific. Only in the year the debt became worthless. But if the debt became worthless in 2019, then that means I can carry it forward and carry it forward and carry it forward and carry it forward. And it becomes a carry forward. Aw, watch this. Going to do it real quick. C-A-R-R-Y-F-O-R-W-A-R-D-T-A-X-C-R-E-D-I-T-E. Carry forward tax credit. Carry forward tax credit. Carry forward tax credits. Anybody can you say carry forward tax credit? Hold on. Carry forward and carry back. Checklist. Canadian tax rules. That's Canada. We well, we're gonna use Canada because the same rules. No, we're gonna use US. I R S. Hurry up. All right. What is IRX tax form 8859 carry forward of DC first time home buyers? Nobody cares about that one. Business tax credit. Your general business credit for the year consists of your carry forward business credit from prior years plus the total of your current credit. So you're doing it as a business so that you can get the full benefit of the whole credit. Any credit not refunded will be carried forward and included. Do your research, people. Do your research. Go and ask. Uh, oh, hold on. Watch this. Now, this is work opportunity. Nobody cares about work opportunity because nobody ever gave me an opportunity when I worked. What do you mean the work was the opportunity? No, the work was slavery. It was voluntary slavery. But they paid me as a slave. Hold on. I'm only doing this for a second. Now watch this. We're going to get rid of this right here. We're going to put one other word. Now, he doesn't always give the precise answer, but he's going to give us uh, federal tax credits are non-refundable. means that if the credits exceed the amount of tax owed, the exceed amount will not be refunded to the taxpayer. Instead, they can be carried forward to a future tax year and applied to offset those taxes as a year. The carry forward period for most credits are 20 years. Uh -uh. Now, he says federal tax credits are refundable. Hold on. I don't know where he got this non-refundable thing. <sighs> Some federal tax credits are refundable, which means that if the credit exceeds the amount of taxes owed, the credit of the amount refunded to the taxpayer the little, 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 will be advanced because it's uh, And it gives the examples of all the tax credits. Okay. Now, we got one more thing.
and can be carried forward indefinitely that are refundable cannot be carried forward indefinitely but non-refundable tax credits can be carried forward for some years Refundable tax credits can be claimed in the current tax year even if the taxpayer doesn't owe any taxes the refund credits amount exceeds tax liability the difference will be refunded to the taxpayer that's the taxes you've already paid while non-refundable tax credits that are not paid out in cash they are carried forward to a future tax year and apply to offset taxes of those years carry forward period most tax credits generally is 20 years but it can vary depending on the specific tax credit ladies and gentlemen tax credits are indefinitely the carrying forward period is indefinite but we'll let we'll let that be okay as a matter of fact watch this I, I put it right here. Where's my indefinitely? I'm sorry. Give me a second. Hold on. Where's my indefinitely? There we go. Copy. Hey, perplexity. I'm feeling perplexed at this time. Can you help me unperplex myself? Thank you, perplexity. This is perplexity.com. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't want me to be perplexed. New thread. Watch this. All right, federal tax credits are generally non-fundable, meaning that they can be used to reduce the amount of tax credits not exceed liability. However, unused tax credits can be carried forward up to 20 years. I know better than that. So, let's do more detail. You notice how they use the word generally? Are generally, okay, federal tax credits are generally refundable meaning that the amount of credit larger than the amount of personnel that are receiving a refund for the difference. However, some credits, such as lifetime learning credits, are not refundable and can only be used to pay any taxes you owe. Unused credits generally carry back one year and can be carried forward for up to 20 years, though certain small businesses can carry general business credits back five years and forward 25 years. For federal and some state research and development credits, Unused credits can be carried forward indefinitely. So do yourself a favor. Do your research on research and development credits. Okay. Now watch this. I'm going to ask another question. Got to make it make sense. All right, that's the question I'm asking. Businesses can ferry forward state and federal liability future tax years. R&D can be carried forward up to 20 years, while in some states allow indefinite carry forward. For example, the state of California allows businesses to carry forward R&D up to nine years. There is no minimum ceiling on how much can be claimed via this tax credit. There is no ceiling as how much can be claimed. That means that there is no limit. R&D, 20-year state employee carry forward. I'm looking for the transfer, for example. There is no maximum. Uh, some states, different rules carry forward, for example. But I'm, okay. I'm looking for transfer. They didn't answer my question. I'm not, I'm not happy with that. Okay. And that's okay. So now I'm going to ask the idiot, Mr. Kevin. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually glad I went to Kevin. Some of you guys need to understand this. Kevin, this is not the main system. This is not the main system, ladies and gentlemen. The main system is the API system. I also have that system. I haven't used it on video, but I'll be going over it shortly. 
Give me a second to ask Kevin this question. And hurry up, Kevin. I ain't got all day. Research and development tax credits can be transferred at the federal and state level in order to carry them forward indefinitely. Oh, really? A specific process of transferring credits vary depending on the jurisdiction and the type of federal level R&D tax credits can be transferred to a process called credit monetization. Yay! Okay. Do your research, people. So for those of you who are moping and groping and talking about you don't have this, you don't have that, you can't afford this, you can't afford that, shame on you. There are options, options, options. There are options. Uh, I got to go take care of my dog because he took off his vest and they're not allowed to take off their vest. So I got to go. Speak to y'all later.